Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the roles, permissions, and division in Genesis Cloud Contact Center. In Genesis, people are often assigned a particular role, or and roles are then assigned into a permissions. Each role can contain one or more permissions that can be applied, that can give you different privilege for different tasks. Now, everyone who has been assigned to that particular role has the same permission and can can perform the same type of task. So, for example, if you if you want to create an agent, a group of agent with the agent role, then all the age, all those people in with that particular role will be acting as an agent. Now, in order to manage the role, the best practice is to keep the number of role to a minimum as possible. The more roles you have, the more time it will take for you to manage the permissions and the users who use them. Now, before you can create a role, think about the possibility of modifying a permission for an existing role that you might have. Chances are that you may just need to tweak it a little bit before you create a new role. So it doesn't. For example, if everyone within your organization needs to have a uh, needs to have the same additional permission, then you may want to add that permission to an existing employee role instead of creating a new one and then assign it to all the users who may already have the similar role applied to it. Role can be unassigned or disabled at any given time. Now there are uh, auto assign default rule or roles that are available to us. Now, there are several default roles that come with Genesis Cloud product when you first sign in. The two most common roles are the employee role and the admin role, uh, are the only roles that are assigned automatically. Now, if you create, a, if initially when you first create the account or your account is created by Genesis, you'll be given a username, which is your basically admin role or admin account. And that account will automatically have an admin role. And then you have an employee role created for you. As you create those people, you can automatically apl apply those people into an employee role within your organizations. The employee role has the lowest level of permission and is assigned to all users by default. So as soon as you create a user, it will be automatically assigned to that role. And if you have addition other roles in your uh, um, permissions for example then you always have to keep in mind the employee role will have the lowest permission level now admin role of course uh, uh, gives the perm uh, user permissions to make any changes to genesis cloud organizations this role is automatically assigned to whoever set up the organization so when you if you are the person who's setting up the organization after receiving the invitation by genesis cloud you will probably most likely create that account and that account will automatically become part of the admin role. Now, this person is responsible for inviting other people who in the organization and then may uh, assign them the admin uh, role uh, individually. Now, there are other roles that uh, so, some permissions may are, are not associated with any default role in Genesis Cloud, whether it is the admin or employee. Uh, other default roles that are available, for example, you have the co-browser agent, which is a role for co-browser agent functions. And for you to use a co-browser uh, agent functions, you would need a Genesis Cloud 3 or a GC3 license that, uh, in order for you to use that function. Now, you also have a communicate uh, with an admin. So communicate admin means that this is an individual who is going to manage the communicate uh, component of your Genesis, which is basically, let's say, uh, registering phones or setting up SIP trunk, etc. In order for that individual to be able to manage the communicate part of the Genesis cloud, uh, in that case, you would need the license called communicate. Now, you also have the user aspect of the communicate. Uh, which communicate role for placing calls. So this is the this you also need a license for that call communicate. But this license give the user the ability to make a call, for example. Now the developer role uh, role for any user who needs to use an API public API client applications. So if you are developing, let's say, an external API applications, and you need to communicate with uh, Genesis Cloud. Well, you're going to you're going to need a user account that has the developer role. 
Then you have the master admin, Genesis Cloud uh, Administrator license uh, uh, required for uh, master admin role. Now that that is basically called the Genesis Cloud license. If you want to use the outbound role, uh, outbound admin uh, for managing the outbound dialing, you would need the Genesis Cloud 2 license uh, in order for you to do the day-to-day -day administration. The outbound agent or agent for outbound dialing also uh, can be applied to the individual agent. Now, this is uh, basically when agent is going to be responsible for outbound call. Now, in order for any, any agent to act as an outbound agent, you do need a Genesis Cloud 2 license as well. Now, remember in the previous chapter, we talked about the Genesis Cloud license. You have the Genesis Cloud, uh, Genesis Cloud 2 and Genesis Cloud 3. We're talking about those licenses. Now, in order to create Genesis Cloud Supervisor uh, role for supervisor functions, you would need a license as well. And the, general, the minimum license you need is the Genesis Cloud. For the end user, uh, you, you would need a basic agent functions, then you can use the communicate or Genesis cloud license for that matter as well. For license management, licenses are managed through the assignment of the role. So as I am trying to assign a user to a particular role, it will pop up the license that it needs. So let's go take a look at how it works on the administration page. So as you can see, we have the roles and permissions and we have a user, let's say uh, I'm going to add a user. Let's call this Faisal at, uh, at gmail.com. Oh, well, at gmail.com. at voicemail.com. And the division, I'll just keep it home for right now. Uh, it's going to send an email to uh, Faisal, which will ultimately I have to activate. And once I activate that, I will be able to create a username and uh, sorry, the password for that. Now, in order for uh, me to go to the added user, I can. So as you can see, I'm automatically applied to the employee role, which is the very basic role that is applied for all the users that is created. Now you can always view all the other roles that you have. And as you can, uh, right now, I am not part of that role. So let's say you want, you want to make Faisal uh, or Afcon an admin. You would select this little button. It will turn on the admin role. Now I'm not going to activate that, but let's say I want to become the admin of the communicate. So let's go, I'm going to go and admi uh, apply that. All right, and save. Now, what's going to happen is going to pop up a window and say, hey, do you want to update the license? Remember what I said, in order for you to use the communicate admin or communicate user, you're going to need the license. And it says that the following license are required by the role that you have chosen. So the license that is required is called communicate. But the license that currently assigned to me is a collaborate. So assigning these role will increase your license assignment to this user. Uh, do you want to continue? So obviously I'm going to say yes. And now I've been assigned that particular license for that matter. So again, if as soon as I go and let's say if I go back and I will add more, uh, if I want to view uh, all the other roles, let's say I will choose my, I, I, let's say I chose myself to be an outbound. I will select this option and save. Again, it's going to ask me that you need to update that with Genesis Cloud 3 uh, as a license. So each role will, will give you a, a notification in advance whether you want to apply the license or not. And sometimes you have to think about it because you may not have the necessary license. So you have to go uh, take a look at your documentations or whatever the license file to see, make sure that you have enough license for that or not. That each role has each, each role has an associated license that will reflect the level of permissions assigned to that particular role. When you assign a role to a user, you are also assigned the license, as you can see. Now, by default, Genesis Cloud automatically automatic uh, uh, Genesis Cloud enable automatic license assignment, exceeding the number of annually contracted uh, contracted users may subject you to over overage uh, or your over charge uh, rate as per, as per your contract so each contract may have a certain saying that when you go beyond your number of def um, 
contracted users, they might overcharge you a certain rate in order to use the next, five, let's say, 100 or 500 or 50, whatever the contract agreement that you have. To increase the number of annually committed seats for your Genesis Cloud subscription, you want to talk to your sales representative to ensure that, that they will update on their end as well. So we have seen how we can assign a user to a role and by doing so, how the license will be affected by that as well. Now division, which is basically allows you to group or segregate your object, but keep them in, inside the same organization. Now they think about creating a division for business unit. You may create a business unit called West sales group, East sales group, or uh, someone who's, who, who's responsible for North America uh, territory, someone who's focusing on the Europe territory, etc. You can create up to 50 divisions uh, at a time uh, in Genesis account. Now, after the division is created and configured, you can use the role to, role to grant the user access to that particular division. Now, after you configure division and maintain them, is maintaining them is very minimal because they really don't have to do much about that. Associated queue to the correct division ensures that the user with the role that is tied to the division have the appropriate division with the proper access to object within that within those divisions. So for example, uh, your configurable object uh, where you can apply the division to is architect flows. It could be users, outbound campaign, management unit, etc. If a user belongs to a home division and you're trying to access an architect flow, maybe on a sales division, then you may not have a visibility onto that. Now, an example of a division for us, uh, uh, let's say you have a company that has an operation in Indianapolis, San Francisco, and a corporate office in Phoenix. To determine how to divide your organization into division, you want to review the queue that exists within the organization and sort them by locations. So you may have a queue for Indianapolis, you may have a queue for West Coast, uh, managing West Co uh, agent in the West Coast, etc. So here is an example. Uh, you have the queue in, uh, in Indianapolis, which is support east, marketing east, and sales east. And then you have a support west, marketing west, and sales west. So anything that is managed by the west coast, like San Francisco, you want to make sure that those users, those queues, those flows, they're all part of one division. Uh, for example, users who are responsible for San Francisco should be part of the San Francisco division. The flow or uh, the script that you create should also be part of the, the West Coast div uh, division in this, in, in this scenario. This will help you organize your scripts, organize your users, and uh, basically, uh, you know, the structure of your contact center in more manageable concept. After you move the object into appropriate divisions, grant the users necessary the role and assign the appropriate division to each user's role. Now, here's an example of Anna, uh, Diane Abel. Diane, uh, Diane Abel has a supervisor role and has access to Indianapolis divisions, where the Dex Cooper is a supervisor role but has access to San Francisco divisions. Now, uh, while well, each supervisor is managing their respective, then you may have a manager who is responsible for managing the both supervisor. So usually manager role will, get, will give you a view of all the supervisors that they're, they're responsible for managing. Now, another example, the manager could uh, not only be man monitoring the supervisor, but can also monitor the main flow. Main flow does not have to be, let's say, the main, or let's say, your uh, script does not have to be either on Indianapolis or San Francisco. It could belong to its own division itself. So in this example, uh, uh, Ellen, for example, have access to the queues, users, flows in all divisions, whereas, whereas Diane only have access to the East Coast and Dex will only have access to the West Coast. So it kind of gives you control that uh, if you are only responsible for this, you cannot access anything on some, uh, somewhere else. From Diane's view, uh, when open the view, the data she, can, she, she, she sees consists of metrics for all convers conversions, conversations, sorry, 
associated with the Indianapolis division. So she or he will not be able to see anything from San Francisco. So this is a good way to kind of uh, control who gets to see uh, in, 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 uh, what data within your network. The data include all conversations that at any any of the Q agent in Indianapolis division only. Uh, it can include conversation handled by the Q in San Francisco division in a case where there's overflow. Like for example, call came into uh, call did came into San Francisco, but agent was not available. So you end up choosing an agent who happens to be on Indianapolis. So in that case, yes, Sadana may be able to see some of those data because of the over overflow scenario. So as you can see, you can use the uh, rules for managing your environment, very, uh, your permissions to your users. There are default rules created with the account like admin and employee, employee having the least uh, permis permission, permissions. And then you can assign the users to the appropriate role by creating them. There are certain uh, roles comes with the system. And as you assign them uh, with, uh, as you assign user to a particular role, you will be up subject to a appropriate license. Now, keep in mind that if you go beyond your contractual uh, level of number of users, then you will, you may end up uh, being charged certain call or over rate. You can also use the divisions in order to organize your flow, where certain users can only be part of a certain divisions and they can only see data from their respective divisions. All right, so that's the overview about the divisions, uh, sorry, roles, permissions. Uh, take a look at our uh, lab guide where I'll show you how to create roles, assign them in more lab environment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.